Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Techie, and in this video, we're going to cover PHP abstract classes. An abstract class is a class that must have at least one abstract method. And the abstract method is a method that is defined, but its code is not implemented. So it's up to the extending child classes to implement the code of the abstract method. The abstract class is created with the keyword abstract followed by the keyword class and then the name of the class I'm gonna name it element and let's go ahead and now create the abstract method with the same keyword abstract give it a public access and then function and the name of our method is going to be a remind I'm also going to use column string to make sure this method returns a string. And that's it. We have now created an abstract class with one abstract method. And as you can see, there is no body code of this method. So now we're going to create a child class, which is going to extend this method and then implement the code or the body of the actual method. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Class, gonna name the class water extends element. This method inside the child class must be named exactly the same. So we're going to say public function remind and then call in string. And now we're going to define the body of the element and remember that it must return a string. So all we're going to say is return and then the message water element. Okay, so at this point we have created an abstract class with one abstract method. We have also extended the parent method with a child class named water and we have also implemented the abstract method inside the child class and created the body so now we're going to test out our class by creating an object so let's create a new variable name it element and say new water to instantiate our water child class and then all we have to do is say echo element remind and that should print out our message water element so let's go ahead and open a browser and we have water element now let's go ahead and change our child class a little bit so instead of hard coding the water element string here we can actually use two methods to get the current class name and we can also use a method to get the parent class name so let's delete this here and we're going to use the method get underscore class and then this which is referring to this object so that is going to get the current class name which is water and then let's concatenate the string with a dot and use another method get parent class of this object so that is going to get the parent class of the current object which is the element so it's going to print out exactly the same it's going to print out water element just like before okay let's go ahead and save this and test this in the browser and as you can see we still have water element so by using these methods instead of hard coding the string of the class names ourselves we can now create more child classes and the functionality will be done for us so we don't have to change the actual string that is printed out and now let's go ahead and actually create three new child classes name the second one fire the third one earth and the fourth class air and leave all the functionality exactly the same so now we can create or instantiate these four classes here fire earth and air let's also go ahead and print out the constant br to have some spacing between our messages and now let's go ahead and view the whole thing in a browser and now we have water element, fire element, earth element, and air element. 
So the child name classes have all changed without us having to change the code. Now let's actually create the message for every element that we have here. So for that, we're going to create a private property and name it message. And here we're going to have a meaningful message related to each element. So for the water element, we're going to remind ourselves to drink eight cups of water every day and become aware of emotions. Let's also modify the code here a little bit and we're still going to be returning a string. We're just going to add the message by concatenating it with a colon and just adding this message. So that is going to print out the actual message here. And let's go ahead and also change the rest of the classes as well. So I'm just going to copy this code and paste it here. And let's go ahead and add the message to all the classes as well. So for the fire element, we're going to have work on creative and passionate projects which is a message re related to the fire element, the earth element, private message. The message from the earth element is going to be develop body awareness and healthy posture because the earth element is related to the body. And then finally the air element, which is associated with the breath and the mind. The message is going to be develop breath awareness and mind concentration. So now we have a unique message that will be displayed by each of the elements with the method remind. Okay, let's go ahead and view this in the browser. And now we have a useful message from every element reminding us of healthy habits. So we've actually created a very useful program. Now we're going to add a second abstract method to our parent element class. And we're going to set its access to protected, which just means that this method is only going to be accessible inside of the parent or child classes. And we're just going to create a method that will let us set the custom message instead of the default one. And it's going to take in custom message as a property. Let's also create the new property custom message inside of our parent class so that we don't have to define it in all of our child classes. And let's set the access to private so that it can only be used inside of the classes. So all the child classes will now have custom message as a property. Okay, so Okay, so now let's go ahead and implement the new abstract method set custom message inside all of the child classes. And we can actually use and we can actually set the access to public instead of protected and this will be perfectly legal because the extending child classes of abstract uh, parent class when Now let's go ahead and declare this new property custom message inside of our parent class so that we don't have to define it in all of our child classes. I'm going to set its access to protected and I'm going to name it custom message. And now we're ready to implement set custom message method inside of all of our child classes. And here we're actually going to set the access to public instead of protected because the extending child classes of the abstract method must have a less restricted access. So they can either be protected or public, but they cannot be private. And this is just to demonstrate how we can modify our extending classes a little bit when defining the abstract methods. So we can use public instead of protected. And this will allow us to use these methods outside of the classes. Okay, so public function set custom message. It's going to take in custom message as a parameter 
and now let's go ahead and define the body of the method and we're simply going to set this custom message to custom message so we're setting the property custom message that we defined here in the parent class and we have the custom message accessible inside of the child class because the child class inherits all of the parent properties and methods and we're setting this property to the variable that is passed down from the user okay so now we can set the custom message and overwrite the default message here and to implement our set custom message method properly we're gonna modify our remind method a little bit so instead of returning the whole thing let's just go ahead and echo out our child class and parent class names and then on the new line we're going to return the message and first we're just gonna check if is set this custom message and if it's set we're just gonna return this custom message otherwise we're gonna return default message okay so our methods are now ready so let's go ahead and copy and paste them in the rest of the classes and our set custom message method should now work so let's go ahead and test this and we're going to set custom message before calling the remind method so we're gonna say element set custom message and then any message that you like I'm gonna say uh, game emotional mastery and this will overwrite the original message or default message which was drink eight cups of water every day and become aware of emotions so let's go ahead and view this in a browser and now we have gain emotional mastery so we can also do this to all of the other child classes as well and it will work in exactly the same way now let's go ahead and add a construct method to our parent element class and the construct method will be called automatically when the object is instantiated and we create a construct method with two underscores and the name construct and it will take in an array for keywords and the default value of keywords is just gonna be empty array so in case no parameter is specified we're just gonna have an empty array so the keywords so that makes the parameter keywords optional and here we're just gonna say this keywords equals keywords and now let's create the property protected keywords equals array so what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be associating some keywords any keywords that come to mind that are associated with each element so with water we can for example use some keywords like fluid deep shallow flowing etc and now let's add another abstract method that will actually get or print out the keywords for us so we're gonna name it get keywords and inside of the child class we're actually gonna add an optional parameter inside of the method which is another thing we can do when implementing abstract methods okay so let's go ahead and add this method in the first child class water element public function get keywords and so here we're going to add an optional parameter which is going to be a separator and we're gonna set the default value to a comma so the keywords will be separated with a comma by default if no parameter is specified and now we're just gonna add a for each loop to loop through the keywords array and print out all the keywords and first we're gonna say echo keywords and then for each this keywords as keyword so we're looping through the keywords array and inside of the for each loop before printing out the keyword we're gonna test to see 
if we are at the end of the keywords array because we don't want to print out the separator um, at the end of the last keyword so here we're gonna test for this by saying keyword not equal and this keywords and that's gonna test to see if we're not at the end of the array and if we're not at the end of the array we're gonna print out keyword with a separator otherwise we're just gonna print out a keyword by itself and that's it our get keywords method should now work so let's go ahead and copy and paste this method inside the rest of the child classes okay so first we're gonna add the array of keywords inside of our method constructor which means we're gonna add it here so for the water element I'm gonna add some keywords related to water like flow emotion fluid deep and intuition and now all we have to do is call our get keywords method element get keywords let's use the br constant here and now let's view the whole thing in a browser and keywords but it's not printing the actual keywords so let's see what we did wrong and we forgot the echo keyword here so let's just go ahead and add that and add it to all the other child classes as well so that we're printing out the actual keywords okay now let's test this in the browser and now we have all the keywords being printed out so at this point you can just play around with the rest of the child elements I'm just gonna add my own keywords that I associate with fire earth and air gonna add keywords to the earth element and air but feel free to add your own keywords that you associate with all these elements and we can also set a custom message for all the elements as well so here we can say something like spend more time in nature okay and let's go ahead and print out the keywords for all the rest of the child classes and now view this in the browser and so now we have all the keywords associated with each element being printed out as well as a custom message for earth element and that's it for this video about PHP abstract classes as well as some other additional object oriented features if you guys like this video please like share and subscribe and I'll see you next time clever techie out